Hey everybody, it's Matt, and today we're gonna do another reaction video, um, or I guess I'll call them a reaction and a review video. I actually don't know if I wanna split this into two things where I kind of first take a look at these photo books and really do like a first impression slash reaction. And then once I have some time to think about it, digest it, and really come up with my own opinion about it, do a full on review of the photo book. But for now, let's just call it a reaction and review video and do both. So today, let's just get right into it. We're going to take a look at Daito Moriyama's Tales of Tono, which is a small little book that I picked up in downtown LA that is about his travels to this town in northeastern Japan called Tono. And I know this because there's a section at the end of the book where there's a collection of essays. So I read that first. I actually have not skim through this book so it'll be the first time you and I will be looking at it together so let's just get into it so I know what it's about but I haven't actually seen the the images in it um but ooh some color shots of Tono also real quick I'm trying to get through these photo books really quickly um and to let you pause and focus on a photo that catches your eye. But if you think there's a better way to do these or there's a just a want me to slow down so it's more well paced, let me know because it is kind of fast. Ah, it looks like a beautiful day in Tono. Well, I'll, just read, I'll read this part though. For people like me who don't have a hometown to return to, who run after their dream of a hometown, Behaving like a spoiled child in spite of being old enough to know better, the idea of a hometown is a swollen utopia of countless childhood memory fragments. It's something like the original landscape. I have to say that I was helplessly obsessed with Tono being the embodiment, embodiment of my hometown dream, a place that existed only in my imagination. It's a portrait, look at this guy, dude. A portrait of Daido Moriyama looking all slick. He said uh, he led a a photographer, a young photographer joined him on this trip and take a portrait of him. And he said like he felt like a writer looking at that trip. Dang, you already see these high contrasty black and white style that he's known for. Taking a picture of, I guess where he's staying. Fields, clouds, the people there. That's funny. Well, that's just fun. Picture of the old lady. I've noticed something. Like, I, I always take pictures at face value. Or I've noticed a pattern myself where I do. But then I just went to an exhibit yesterday uh, where I saw a bunch of other more contemporary photographers. And you know how, like, at museums, they give you the description, the, like, artist statement, and they really, like, puff something up and really like explain things in uh, artistic language basically bullshitting or bs but there's some truth to it and one thing I'm, I'm beginning to realize with photography is this concept of narration i've always heard that photos tell a story but i actually never really under truly understood what that meant and i still don't think i do but i'm having a better sense of that now and just that image of this old lady looking happy. It already tells me that, okay, at, at surface level, it's an old lady who looks happy, but Tono is a place where people are happy, that she's an embodiment of the people that you meet here or that live at this place. So not only says something about her, but about the place that he's at, this village, this town. He's literally taking pictures of everything. He took a picture of a chair, grass, shadows, shadow, shadow self-portraits, advertisements, everything. And that's, you know, that's aligned with his style um, and the movement that he was part of where he just took pictures of literally everything. These everyday objects that aren't necessarily like photogenic or pretty, but is that a pig? But, um, but yeah, and look, just more people looking like, they don't look sad, and I'll tell you that, they look happy, very content. It's 
so crazy going through this really fast. Even have games, little candy machines. But yeah, he takes pictures of these everyday things, rooftops, more ads, clothes and window shops that really give, at least give me a sense of, of this town, the whole sense, like every inch and corner. He's taking pictures literally of everything, of everyday life that I feel like if I was just walking across the street in this town, this is what I would see. And which is also why I think it's important that photographs exist or live as a body or series of works because then it really tells a whole story i just want to rewind and see it's like a festival people dressed up cemetery trains buses transportation kid happy and I guess it's really important to think, whoa, that's a cool portrait. Kind of scary, but it's interesting because in the essay at the end, he talks about finding this hometown or trying to recreate, not, not recreate, he's trying to find this sense of hometown that he has in his heart, in his head, and Tono is a place that attracted him to do that. So viewing it from that lens, just to pause really quick, it's like the pictures we're looking at aren't just aimed or the purpose isn't just to take pretty pictures. It's to, it's reflecting what he imagines to be what his hometown would be like, but he doesn't have a hometown. And once we get to the end, I can t talk a little bit about that, which, okay, we're at the end. But throughout all of this, he talks about not having a hometown and seeing this original landscape or this place that he just never had as a kid because his dad was like an insurance salesman and they moved around a lot. He changed schools a lot. He was always saying hellos and goodbyes when he was making friends as a kid to the point where he stopped. And ever since then, it's like he's been searching for this hometown that he's never had. And he kind of admits this in his essays where he goes to each and every place hoping to find that feeling or that sense. And when he's there, he has these preconceptions or these images, these fragments of what he hopes it would be like, whether that's shaped by poems or stories written about it, because in the case of Tono, there's actually, I guess, this, this folklore book called Tales of Tono, which this is the title of this book, where it really told a story and, and like fairy tales. It basically painted Tono as like a fairy tale type, like mysterious mystique place and Moriyama goes in and has that preconception but he notes that when he has his camera and actually starts taking pictures whatever is in his head gets not it gets reflected in the pictures he takes but the pictures he takes and the things he sees in front of his eyes and in front of his camera challenge those preconceptions so it's like he's stuck in the middle and his photographs ultimately reflect him being stuck between what he wants it to be and how it actually is. And there's a tug of war between trying to paint a place in one of those two directions. That's my take on it, at least. I don't know if that made any sense. That might have sounded all like BS, <laughs> but, but yeah, uh, that's my reaction to, to Daito Moriyama, Tales of Tono. I definitely, I don't know. I just think it's a, a cool, cool thing. Like when photographers write about their work and provide some more context into it. I mean, I had no idea what, that's what it was going to be about. I just knew it was a place, but yeah, it really, it's on some deep level type shit, man. I might need to think about it some more and get back to it, but 
I think in my own photography, I might start trying to at least think more in that sense of, if I'm at a location, when I'm taking pictures, is my goal to take pictures how this place actually is? But that's kind of futile because whatever I take a picture of is how I saw it and how I chose to shoot it or how to make that image and tell that story. So ultimately it's always shaped by my opinion, my prejudices, my all of that. So anyway, just some food for thought. Hope you like this one and I'll see you in the next reaction video.